Hey, fatty! This is the Snake Diet Live question and answer period. So ask me any questions. Anything. Okay, like the nastiest, grossest shit you can fucking think of. The issues you're having. Anything. I don't care. I don't care if you're shitting blood. I don't care if you got crazy oozes coming out of your private parts. I don't fucking care. Ask me anything, okay? Ask me any questions about snake juice. Ask me any questions about eating routines, macros, exercise, you name it. Anything, okay? Just letting some people chime in here. So, maybe I'll start with a little story. Um, so, when I first started basically drinking the salt water, here's how it happened. Um, we were doing some experiments, and I had been, I had been eating basically a one-meal-a-day routine for a while. Now, I was pretty lean, so I could pull that off. Okay, fat people don't need to eat every day. We already know this. So I was doing this, and then I, I wasn't really preaching these longer fasts at that point yet because I was doing self-experimentation. So I was doing like 48s and 72s. And usually on a 72-hour fast on plain water, I would hit a wall at about 48 to 60 hours. And, that's, and basically what would happen is I'd go to the gym and I would push my fucking comfort zone like crazy. I'd go to the gym and try doing like deadlifts. And I would fucking near black out. That was so lightheaded. I remember one time I went to the gym actually on a 72 hour fucking fast on plain water. I think I, I think I was drinking Perrier's and San Pellegrino's, which are a pretty good mineral water source. And I literally, every fucking set of deadlifts, I wasn't even pulling that heavy, like maybe 315 pounds for like, or maybe 365 for triples or something. But I would have to fucking take a full five minutes to recover just to hit the next set. Like, I had to sit down. I had to fucking, like, relax and get my marbles back to hit the next set. And so that's kind of where I knew something was up. And then what happened was I started coaching a guy, and we started fucking around with salt water to try to cut water weight off of him and shit. And one thing led to another, and I ended up doing this eight-day fast on snake juice. So I learned all this shit and I figured, I'm like, okay, let's just, because what happened was I ended up doing all this research on a sodium potassium pump. So that's like on your cells, on every one of your cells, you got like a sodium potassium pump, okay? And essentially it keeps the balance of sodium pot potassium. This is how your body fires muscles. So I did all this research on fucking, on the molecular level about these electrolytes and I realized potassium and sodium are like key so that's when I did this very first eight-day snake juice fast. And that's when I figured out I was onto something crazy and I could go eight days like fuck all drinking salt water. And then slowly but surely I just got more aggressive with my coaching methods with people. And then I just started chopping weight off of my crazy. That's when I realized that one meal a day was mainstream fucking bullshit. Like, like okay, if you're ripped, if you're fucking ripped, eating one meal a day isn't that fucking bad. But any of you fat people don't need to be eating one meal a day. Okay, that's for people like that are lean that are going to be eating most days out of the week and then always throwing in at least one 48-hour fast per day. I talk about this on my YouTube channel. Just going to scroll back and take a look at some of these questions here. Um, no, fucking pre-workouts are fucking trash. Does that answer your question? Fuck, pre-workouts, any, any of that shit. It just ends up being an addiction because you'll hit your pre-workout what you can't take because there's fucking sweeteners and shit and that crap anyway. Caffeine, you name it. And then it wires you up. And then what happens is it's just this slippery slope. Because then you end up losing sleep every night. And you don't get the good REM sleep. And then you need your fucking pre-workout. Just like you need your fucking coffee. Okay? All that shit's junk. Just eat fucking food for fuck's sakes. Get your fucking sleep. Take the stress out of your life. If your fucking job sucks, fucking quit. This is why I fucking live. I just actually was talking to a fella because I get a lot of people coming to me nowadays. They're like, you know, they're telling me like, this is going to blow up. They're telling me, which it is going to blow up. They're like, you're going to, it's going to be viral. Like, you know, and then they're asking me, how am I going to like make any money or whatever? And I don't care about fucking money. I need to make enough to live 
But I don't care. The reason I don't care because it doesn't help me as a product to help you. Because I need to fucking live this lifestyle to show you that I can be happy and healthy with nothing. Because the fucking stress is what makes you fucking a fat ass in the first place. Okay? So that's why I don't care about money. It's the biggest part of the diet. The simplicity is the biggest part. Once you get the fasting down pat, it's the stress being low that keeps you on track so you don't fuck up. Cutting things out of your life, okay? Any issues with going from snake juice fasting to dry fasting? How to prep for that? You could always do that if you want. Okay, you could, you could dry fast. I fucking do some crazy shit. That I don't even fucking, haven't even really talked about as much as I should probably. I'll talk about it here right now. So, you could like do a snake juice fast. And like, okay, if you're, unless you're trying to heal something that's really specific, like skin issues for sure, dry fasting is number one, okay? Dry fasting is going to heal teeth. The more, the longer you can keep shit out of your mouth and off your teeth and out of your body, period, you're going to heal faster. Dry fasting heals you the fastest. But you could juggle the two if you wanted. But there's not really, if, you're, if your goal is to cut the fat, here's in my opinion, here's what you should be doing. If you're trying to cut the fat, cut the fat the fastest way possible where you feel the best possible at the start, which is drinking snake juice. Also, most of you do not have the fucking self-control to handle the swings of dry fasting. Dry fasting can fuck with your head. Because if you do like a three-day dry fast, you're going to drop crazy amounts of fucking water weight. And as soon as you fucking refeed and rehydrate, you're going to gain back five pounds. You're still going to cut a pile of fat. But the swings when you dry fast, most people can't even handle that. You know, they're not developed enough to handle those swings. Okay, so if your goal is to lose weight, which is most people's goal, obviously health issues are going to go hand in hand with weight loss. If your main goal is to lose weight as fast as you fucking can, drink snake juice and fast as long as you can on snake juice. That's how you'll feel the best. That's what we're doing with Paul. Okay, we're fasting him on snake juice as long as we can. Okay? This one girl asks, here's, okay, can you explain macros? Your macros are essentially the things that your food's made up of. You got fucking protein, you got carbohydrates, and you got fucking fat. So as far as we're concerned, when you're trying to lose weight, we want you eating as little as possible. So you don't even need to worry about your fucking macros. Once you get lean, then we can start fucking with your macros and dialing in your meals because you're going to be eating a little more frequently. When I say frequently, you'll never eat more than one meal in a day. I'm talking you might eat like five or six meals in a week. That's frequently here in snake diet land, okay? Five or six meals in a week. So your macros, what I like, so when I dial mine, I fuck with them, right? It depends on your goal. Now, if your goal is to try to get like super cut and be cut all the time at maybe a loss of a bit of explosive strength, you'd crank the carbs up a little bit. Keep the protein the fucking same. You dial in your protein, a good start for most people would be like maybe one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. Most people way overdo protein. Okay, but don't worry about that. If you're a fat ass, you don't need to eat. Okay, you don't need to eat. Me and Paul are going to prove it. Because we got him lifting weights, he's going to be building muscle, not eating. Okay, now if you're, if you're like on the other end of the spectrum, where you're like, if you're like me, now if I go 72 hours... When you're getting really lean, if you're doing a 72-hour fast, you better be doing nothing because your body at that point, obviously, there's a point where you're going to start breaking down muscle when you're fucking ripped enough, right? That makes sense. Okay, so that's where you got to dial in your macros a little bit. But like a ketogenic routine, like your mainstream keto is obviously, obviously super low carb, which is fucking trash because you fucking get fucked up bowel movements. I've tried everything. I've actually took like very, very passionate keto people and got them eating fruit again. A nice, well, once you're fucking lean, lean, not fat, okay, we're talking lean people again, I always have to stress that, you fat asses don't need to eat anything for fucking weeks on end. Once you're lean, your meal should look like a nice, well-rounded meal. You should have fucking a small serving of meat, fatty meats, 
Stay away from fucking chicken breasts. They're fucking useless. There's no cholesterol or no fats in them whatsoever. They're fucking cheap. They're just overpriced because of the fucking fitness craze. Thinks it's like the best way to get in your protein. Fucking lean protein's a joke. And then you'd have like fruit and vegetables. That's it. The only time you'd fucking completely want to cut fruit out if you're lean is like my roommate. So he is trying to beat skin issues. So he has a buggered up stomach. Because, so he's staying away from all sugar, even fruit. Now that's the fucking exception, okay? But most people, once you're healthy and lean, you can eat a nice, well-rounded one meal, okay? Small amount of fatty meat, fucking fruit and vegetables. You fat asses don't need to eat. Okay, let's see here. Here's one. This is actually a good question. Being having wicked heartburn, fasting for eight days now, any snake juice ratio changes I should make? So, a lot of times when you're detoxing, you'll even get some heartburn. I've talked about heartburn with one of the ladies that I discuss things with. She's an RN. And one thing is you can do is knock back some baking soda for the heartburn. But don't overdo it and don't use it like a crutch, okay? So, your liver and things will be detoxing and can cause heartburn issues. Like with the amount of bowel, your stomach can get a little more acidic, things like this. Right, But as far as the snake juice ratio itself goes, everyone always is asking me, because I have a bunch of videos where I talk about some different mixtures with the snake juice. If you look at the fucking videos and actually watch them, this is why I don't want people posting their fucking personal mixtures on that group. Because here's the one thing that's true. On the top end, on the top end of the fucking mixture, most people... If you went two liters of water and two teaspoons of each of those salts, okay, two teaspoons of each of those salts, or around 5,000 milligrams of potassium and around 4,000 milligrams of sodium in two liters of water, that would be the most concentrated you would want your snake juice. That's the top end. Now, everybody else, you can dial it down from there. Fuck, I, you could have... Maybe you're drinking a liter and a half of water in a day and you're running like one teaspoon of each of the salts. Or maybe it doesn't really matter. There's a big fucking range there. All you need to know is never completely cut the fucking salts because you'll get fucked up. And don't go over my top end unless you're some sort of radical ass fucking athlete. Okay, that's it. Some of you fat people might want to crank the water up to two and a half liters a day. If you're a male and you're really heavy because... Your body's kicking a lot of ketones through your kidneys. It keeps you flushed a little more. But that's that's the top end. It's that fucking simple. Okay? Two liters of fucking water. Two teaspoons of each of those salts. Potassium chloride and sodium chloride. And then from that point on, dial it in. If you fucking... If you've got some diarrhea, just cut them in half. Just cut the salts in half. Okay? That's a good start. You should never be going much lower than half though. So say if you drank two liters of water in the day, you shouldn't be any less than one teaspoon of each of the salts. Unless you have some sort of crazy health issue or like a renal issue or something with your fucked up kidneys or something crazy. Okay, like I'm talking like kidney failure issues though, not like fucking some mediocre, like not kidney stones. Okay, so that's it. Two liters of water, two teaspoons, two and two, two and two. And you don't have to now, you don't have to drink the whole two liters. Like maybe, like once you're leaner, you might be drinking like, or it depends how much you exercise. Like you might drink just a liter and a half. So it'd be a liter and a half and 1.5 teaspoons of each of the salts. Like it's a starting point, a starting point. Okay, you can fuck with it. It's not, doesn't have to be perfect. You're just drinking salt water. That's why I don't let people put up specifics on the group. Because then some other fucker will listen to some... So then it's like the blind leading the blind. And then they're like, oh, I drink this much. Well, that, you're not that person. It's going to be a bit different for everybody. Like even Paul right now. Paul right now, we have him drinking about two liters of water in the day. And about one and a half teaspoons of each of the salts. And if you really want to know where you're at and you want to get ballsy, taste your piss. You can taste your piss and you can tell exactly where you're at on the salts. You'll taste the potassium and you'll taste the sodium. You just dip your finger in it. And if it's really, really salty, you can cut back on your salts. 
But if you can taste that potassium really strong, you can cut back on your potassium. Okay? Yeah, but as far as the heartburn goes, try knocking back a little bit of baking soda. Remember, if you crank that baking soda up too hard just by itself in water, it might give you the shits. In fact, just to bring that up, a lot of people probably wonder about like salt flushes. So they don't work for me. Like sodium chloride salt flushes don't work. I've took a liter of warm water before and I put in a whole fucking tablespoon of fucking sodium chloride, chugged it, and didn't even take a shit. I just got bloated up. Now, some people react a bit different to the potassium. They might get the shits taking the potassium. But I do, I will run to the can a little bit if, I'm, if I knock back a bunch of baking soda. So, you gotta, like, you gotta learn your body. Okay, learn it. And don't sit there in distress either. Like, if you're having an issue, fucking change something for fuck's sakes or ask somebody for help like one of the snake diet coaches or me. If you're having an issue, don't just keep grinding it out till you're so fucked up that you're playing catch up on your electrolytes. Okay, so this one, <laughs> fuck, you know what I'm going to say to this one. I'd rather suck a horse's cock than have one more snake juice with cayenne. At first it was okay, but now one week in and I'm gagging. I know you said gel capsules get really what would be worse. I know you said gel capsules, no gel capsules, but really what would be worse, vomiting or sipping on some capsules? Here's the thing. Don't be a fucking crybaby for one. For two, dumb it down to just the salts in the water, okay? Pull the fucking cayenne pepper right out. And dumb it down to just the salts in the water. And then what you can do, you don't have to mix the cayenne pepper throughout the day. Okay, you can take a shot. Like you could fucking take like a glass and just put some cayenne pepper in the glass. I don't want you taking fucking capsules. You can fuck up your stomach lining with capsules. Any capsules. I don't promote capsules. Pe capsules are for pussies. That's why they're made. They're like a fucking little bitch ass thing that was made for a bunch of pansies. Okay, like... So what you do is if you want to get the cayenne pepper and just shoot it. So knock back like maybe two or three ounces of water and then put a bunch of cayenne pepper and knock it back. Like how hard is that? And then just fucking drink the fucking snake juice on its own. Okay? I don't care how you get this shit in. Just get it in. Even like the salts. I don't give a fuck how you mix up the salts. So let's talk about the two liters and two liters of water and the two teaspoons of each of the salts. That's on the day. That's on the day. Okay, so like, let's say you mixed one liter of water and you put two teaspoons of each of those salts in one liter. That's about as concentrated as you absolutely want to get. I talked about that in one of the videos. And then you got a liter of fresh water, right? Like you could take a fucking liter of fucking Evian, throw the salts in the Evian, drink that, and just alternate between that and like a bottle of San Pellegrino sparkling water. I don't give a fuck how you get the shit in. Just get it in. It doesn't have to be fucking mixed perfect. You just got to get it in. You know, some people like could lick salt off their finger. I've talked about that. But if you do that, remember, it's concentrated. You could get the shits. But fucking you'll find out the hard way. Okay? We can only babysit you fucking people so much. Just get it in. Because you need the electrolytes. Or else you will fucking feel like shit. Okay, here's a question. Oh, fuck, this one's perfect. One cup of coffee made me dizzy all day. Don't fucking drink coffee. It solves that problem. Fuck, coffee's trash. So the reason I always say coffee is trash because I experimented with fucking coffee to the extreme. I was drinking two cups of black coffee, fasted, every day. And then I'd eat at night. And every fucking time, it didn't do shit, but it got me so wired, I couldn't even focus. And then I would fucking fuck my sleep. Like, if I drank a cup, that just goes to show how bad it really is. If I drank a cup of black coffee at 7 a.m. this morning, if I did, I would fucking lose. I would not sleep tonight with shit. That's how fucking bad it is. If anything that does that to somebody like me, I'm healthy and I have no addictions. If the fucking one cup of coffee does something that fucking spectacular to make me stay up all night 
Obviously, obviously it's fucking junk. Obviously, it's fucking junk. You keto fucking monkeys with your stupid fucking coffee should shut the fuck up. Coffee is trash. I've experimented with it to the extreme. And then you need it every day. Just like your stupid fucking pre-workouts. You need it every fucking day. You get it? If something that you crave and need is junk. How many times do I got to fucking say that to get it through people's fucking heads? Fuck. That's why I tell people, no coffee. No coffee. Ca fucking even green tea. Green tea is so fucking overrated too. The caffeine in it will do the same thing. It's not as strong as the coffee, but it'll still keep you up. Your sleep is number one. If your sleep is shit, you're never going to get the fucking results. You're going to hold water. You're going to hold water for crazy when you don't get your sleep. Always, I always have girls and mostly women that are like stressing about the fat loss so bad that they're not even sleeping. And first thing, when they say they're holding water, what do I ask them right off the bat? I'm like, are you on meds? Okay, no. Good. Are you on birth control? No. Good. Are you putting anything in your mouth other than steak juice? It's like, no. Okay, good. Okay, are you getting your fucking sleep? No, I fucking didn't get my sleep last night. Blah, blah, blah. Like, get your fucking sleep. I don't fucking want to hear your bullshit excuses about the sleep. Get the fucking sleep. Figure it out. If your kids are keeping you up because they're fucking all hyper, maybe change their fucking diet. Get them fasting and fucking eating a higher fat diet and cut the sugar. Then your kids will be behaved and you'll fucking be able to get your fucking sleep. Let's see here. Creatine. Junk. Like, you don't need any of this fucking shit. Okay, what about creatine? Creatine. Eat red meat. Fuck. You don't need any of this crap. It's all in food. Here's the thing. You don't need any of it when you're fat. Your fat has everything you need. Like, look at... Okay, I've trained... We've been to the gym. We've been to the pool twice and into the gym twice fasted, me and Paul. Paul's trained twice fasted in the gym. We don't need nothing when you're fat. Once you get lean, because this is Jason, so he's pretty lean. But all you got to do is just fucking eat red meat. That's it. You don't need any of this shit. Don't let them sell you on all these supplements. They are a fucking joke. Fuck, I'm going to fucking take some pictures of myself probably in a week. I'm fucking getting pretty shredded. And I've fucking been eating like, well, fuck, I'm doing a 48-hour fast right now. But I've been basically eating... About 120 grams maybe of protein via meat most nights. And then as much fruit as I can stuff in my fucking face. Pretty much apples, carrots, bananas, and that's it. Whatever's cheap at Superstore I've been buying. And I feel like a million bucks and I dry fast all day long. Just eat fucking food. Let's see here. Um... What's this one? I fast 48 hours to 123 hours in a row, but sometimes I break my fast with shit like chips and pizza. Well, fucking get your head out of your ass. Don't fucking break your fast with chips and pizza. See, this is a back to the whole thing. Where's your purpose? If you have strong purpose, you're not going to do something so fucking lazy. You're not going to do something so recklessly lazy. Fucking figure out your fucking purpose. Okay, why are you losing the weight? You need to have a real reason, okay? Like I said, do you, are you losing the weight so you look fucking sexier naked? So you look sexier naked in bed? Are you trying to lose the weight because you got fucking other skin issues or health issues or some other shit? Like, get your fucking priorities straight. I hate hearing that. I hate, out of anything I can't stand, is I hate hearing how people did these long fasts and they just crack. Luckily, the fasting works so good that they usually just kind of bounce back on track and the fucking fuck-ups are usually less than the produ productivity, so you'll always get a wicked result. But it fucking just, it's like putting you on pause when you do that. Okay? It's like, pretend there's two cars, and one car's got a nice smooth highway, and another one's got a million speed bumps. Every speed bump is like when you fucking fuck up your fasting. So the car just slowly gets farther and farther behind with the weight loss. Every time you fuck up, you're just fucking pausing your fat loss is what you're doing. So she was watching my McDonald's videos, what it was. So what did she say here? So I guess the key is fasting as long as you can, then eat 3,000 calories a week. Like, okay, let's talk about that 3,000 calorie a week YouTube I made. 
I made that YouTube to give people something to follow before because it sounded so crazy to just not eat indefinitely. You don't need to eat anything. Okay? 3,000 calories a week. If you actually followed that, you like say if you fucking went seven days fasting and ate 3,000 calories, you're going to fucking lose weight like crazy. One thing I will say though, if you're eating that small of a calorie count in the week, fucking eat the whole amount in one sitting so you actually have a decent bowel movement. Eating a bunch of tiny meals could actually plug you up if you're fucking up your macros and not getting enough fucking, like, especially, this is the one thing that keto people don't like eating carrots. Carrots keep you regular. Because I was talking to Dan about this, and fuck, I don't, like, I could eat a pile of carrots and still be in ketosis the next night as long as I fucking, as long as I fucking was dry fasting. See, now, talking about ketosis, you, essentially the idea with that is when you're a fat ass, you're just getting that little extra benefit. Say if you were eating one meal a week. Let's say if you're eating one meal a week. Eating a low-carb meal won't kick you out of ketosis. So you're getting that little bit of benefit if you're eating a meal a week because you'll be in ketosis that extra 24 hours because it take, it'll take you about 24 to 48 to get back into ketosis where you're really roasting fat. But the thing is, is that that really doesn't matter that much when you're fasting that long. Like say with Paul, if we refeed after two weeks of fasting and I'll like I'll get him to eat fucking watermelon. I don't give a fuck if there's fucking sugar in the watermelon. He just fasted for 15 fucking days. You know, it doesn't matter. Now it does matter a lot more if you're trying to really dial in and get fucking shredded to dial in your macros if you're eating more often, like a meal a day most days out of the week. That's where it really starts to count. But when you're a fat ass, if you're eating like once every 5, 7, 10, 15 days, it's not going to matter. Fucking chow down a bunch of fruit. I don't give a fuck. It's not going to make a difference. It'll kick you out of ketosis for a little bit of time, and then you'll be back in, and you're just going to be burning fat like crazy again anyways. Okay, let's see here. Here's one. Um, I'm intimidated by I'm intimidated by the weight room. I want to start strength training, but I don't know how much weight to start with. I think I might be doing it wrong. And if I ask the guys that work or that work at the front, they just try to get me to be out there a bunch of fucking crooks to get you to try to pay for a trainer. Which right now I can't afford any tips. Fat and weight loss, uh, any tips on fat slash weight ratio or how to learn the machines? If you're a complete beginner, honestly, YouTube's your friend. You could even probably go YouTube in, you could go YouTube uh, weight machines even. If you're a complete beginner, the machines are pretty idiot proof to use. Go sit in the machine, look at the little diagram and start fucking moving around. It's pretty hard to fuck it up. Make sure you do some pushing exercises. Pushing would be for like bench press or overhead shoulder presses. Pulling is going to be anything where you're using your back, any pulling. So you want to try to keep the pushing and the pulling about the same volume. So let's say if you're counting your reps. If you did like 50 reps worth of pushing, you'd try to do 50 reps worth of pulling, let's say. It keeps your shoulders healthy. And then get your ass on a couple of the leg machines. Okay, it's simple. That's for a bear beginner just get on the machine start fucking pumping some iron get some burn in your muscles and then go on youtube and look up some like you can even look up some olympic weightlifting people power lifting people you can even look up some actually some of the best too is just to go look up some old arnold schwarzenegger videos for fuck's sakes when he's doing fucking his exercises learn how to do the fucking lifts from these guys okay these guys knew what they were doing just watch how they're doing the lift and then go apply it Start light. Start light, log your weights that you're hitting, and then work up the weight next time or the rep range. Okay, let's say if you were doing a seated row, start at maybe always be on about a minute rest, a minute to 60 seconds rest. If you're any more than that, you're being fucking lazy. No less than a minute, minute to 60 seconds. And then try to hit 60 reps. So say six sets of 10. And then do a minute to 60 seconds between each set. Log the weight you use, so say if it's 50 pounds, okay, so I did six sets of 10 reps on one minute rest using 50 pounds, and you got through it, meaning you felt good on the last set, 
Bump it up the next time to 55 pounds. Then the next time, 60 pounds, 65 pounds. Do that for every exercise. Just keep bumping it up. Log your fucking volumes, okay? Which type of fast do I recommend for a bladder infection? Snake juice or a dry fast? I was actually talking to somebody about bladder infections the other day and the main cause, fuck, now I'm forgetting a bunch of shit. But even if, like, the snake juice, the bladder infection itself is going to be fucking even a detox symptom itself. And another reason you'll even get bladder infections is because of other stomach issues are fucked up. But, like, snake juice fasting regardless, is if you're just, if you're getting in the right amount of salts, you're never overdoing it. I wouldn't, like, dry fasting, like I say, is going to tax you. So either or, like, I can't say if one's going to be better than the other to heal a bladder infection. But if you aren't urinating, like, you could try dry fasting. But it's going to make you feel weak, obviously, dry fasting, okay? But, yeah, I'm at a fucking brain freeze right now. Um, me and Avanti were talking about bladder infections the other day. Because one girl had one. And what happened is they put her on a bunch of fucking antibiotics for the, uh, uh, the original problem was a bladder infection, but then it turned into a kidney fucking, a kidney infection because the first problem wasn't fixed. Kind of, So it was like kind of a stemming problem. But if you're trying to heal it up, like, same thing. Drink water, fucking drink snake juice. Like, if you focus on the goal, like the actual bladder infection itself, like, if I fucking had an issue like that, I'd never take antibiotics. I'd just fucking grind out a hardcore dry fast. If you want to get really hardcore, fucking do some urine fasting. Because fucking urine is going to be like, have like the blueprint for your body. And urine is going to be the easiest thing you could possibly drink. A lot of people think it's disgusting. But honestly, I fucking done more piss fasting than you can shake a stick at. Let's see here. Oh, here's one. If you're trying to bodybuild, how long can I fast within reference to catabolism? It all depends how fat you are. Now, if you're getting lean... You know, you probably want to stick to 48s, maybe throw a 72 in, but it'll matter also how hard you're training. Because if you're on like a 72-hour fast and you're already quite active in the gym, see, with Paul, he wasn't doing anything before. But if you take somebody that was already jacked, and now you're getting them, getting them to try to do a 48-hour fast and train their ass off the same volume as they were before, that could actually be catabolic if they're already quite lean. Like with John, John's the fellow that, I was helping that is the bench presser. He's a 500 pound bench presser. Okay. So the way we have him eating is he eats only on the nights before he trains. And then on the days that he, the off days, he won't eat the night before rest day. So does that make sense? So if he's training tomorrow, he'll eat tonight. And if he wasn't training tomorrow, he'll fast tonight. That's how we control his weight. And that way we're always fucking hammering the food in him because he's already like top level. Okay, so if you're already top level, obviously you can't just train and train and train and train and train and expect not to fucking tax the fuck out of your body if you're already lean. Obviously when you get lean, you got to eat more often, okay? That question that was asked about the kidney infection, or sorry, the bladder infection... You could even message Avanthea and chat her up about that as well. She's probably better even in that area than me. Um, let's see here. What body fat percentage of fat should older 50-year-old women aim for? There's not a number. You know, I talked about body fat before. Just get lean. Because depending on how much muscle you have, it's going to completely affect how much what your body fat percentage is like you could have a guy that's like a 300 pound juice head with a massive fat gut that's still got a super low body fat percentage even though he looks fat on the surface because he's got so much muscle but then you could have a girl that weighs 90 pounds and you can see her abs like she could be like skinny fat and she'll fucking have a poor body fat percentage because she's got no muscle Okay, so you want to be fucking fit. You want to be fit and you want to be fucking, you want to feel lean. So you want to have a tight tummy and be fucking fit and strong. That should be everybody's goal, to be fucking lean and strong. If you're strong and lean, then you're good. If you're lean and weak, 
then you got issues. Then you got to change something. Okay? But if you're strong and lean, you're gold. That's all I fucking preach is that. I'm, I'm huge into body composition. Okay? If you're fucking strong and light, you're doing something right. Okay? If you're fucking light and weak, you're fucking something up. Yeah, Bathia just chimed in on here. So you can try messaging her about that. Yeah. I'd have to go like I fucking talk to people and then I forget shit. And then I'd have to go read about the friggin' bladder infections again and shit. Um, here's one. So Jason was just saying how Tammy, I was a keto nut and stalled at 188. Did the snake diet. Now he's down to 178. Busted my plateau. And I even had Jason eating fruit for fuck's sakes. You see, the keto routine, mainstream keto is a fucking joke. It's not natural. It's not natural. Now, keto combined with hardcore fasting is good for fixing some health issues, but it's still not optimal. Fucking, like, fruit is not bad, okay? Like, fruit isn't bad. These people that fucking preach anti-fruit are fucking idiots. Like, you know, it's just, you want a rounded meal once you're lean. You need it well-rounded, okay? Uh, let's see here. Um, looking for some questions. Oh, this girl said, ooh, I'm not tasting my piss. Do it. You'll know exactly where you're at. If your piss has no taste, drink more fucking salt. I already mentioned the creatine one to somebody else. You don't need fucking creatine. Eat fucking red meat. You don't need any of that shit. It's a waste of fucking money. No, I am not married. Okay, here's one. I get diarrhea every time. Like, you're not saying enough stuff. So you're getting diarrhea. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Okay, like, how much water, how much salt are you getting in? Um, here's one. What's this say? I can't find any videos on marijuana and the snake diet. I'm trying to convince my partner you don't need weed. Smoking dope is a fucking joke. The only people that would ever, ever be using dope would be somebody that's on their deathbed with cancer in the hospital just to fucking beat the pain while they die. It's the same as every other drug. It's going to crank up your cortisol and fuck up your REM sleep. Okay? Fucking smoking dope is going to crank up your fucking cortisol and fuck your REM sleep up. It's fucking junk. It's just another low, vibr low vibration substance. It's it. Fuck all the fucking potheads are all fucking. Yeah, it's, it's fucking. Yeah, it's natural. Fuck. So is fucking cocaine. You know, so fuck all this shit's natural. Like opioids are fucking. They come from a natural source. They're not purely natural. But you know, so the oil in the ground's natural. But it's natural in the ground. Out here it can destroy everything. Like, fuck, just because it's natural doesn't mean anything. Fucking magic mushrooms are natural and they'll fuck you up. Okay, let's see here. Um, here's a question. Tim Cause, what is the best way to grow muscle? Fucking train. Train. Here's one of the problems I see in the gym all the time. So, actually, I was in the gym with Paul the other day, and I actually got a compliment from a guy because I've grown a bunch since I seen him last because I've been pumping iron like crazy. Train. Don't sit there and fucking lollygag and dog fuck in the gym. Most people do not train hard enough. Okay? Why do you think everybody's on gear? Because fucking they don't train. They're lazy. Fuck, Train. Here's a good example. Like, here's my push pull day. Here's my push pull day. One of my push pull days. A high volume day. The other day, I hit my first exercise was flat bench press. I hit six sets of 20 reps on one minute rest with 155 pounds. This is a high volume day, okay? Lightweight, high volume. You try going and doing that. Six sets. So that's 120 reps total with 155 pounds in eight minutes, basically. The next exercise I did was a close grip bench press. I did five sets of 12 with 100, 100, 140 pounds 
on one minute rest. So fast, fast. I'm like leading right into these exercises, like just banging them off. You should be in the gym like an hour and 10 minutes tops if you're banging through this as fast as you should. Then I hit like kind of an isolated uh, tricep exercise, like a skull crusher, but I do them a little different than people. I go way behind my head when I do them. And then I hit my pulls. I did a bent over roll with 155 pounds, six sets of 10 on one minute rest. And then I did um, <clears throat> a seated roll with like 160 pounds, six sets of 10, one minute rest. And then I did, uh, oh man, I did another one. I can't remember. But I usually do three exercises push, three exercises pull. That's my, and I do that three times in, six, in a six day cycle. And the, be- the only thing that really changes is my flat bench press. I have a day where it's like light with high, high volume, medium with, not as much volume, and then I have a recovery day that's the same weight as the medium day with like half the volume. And that's it. Then I have two squat days in that six day cycle. My squat day, I'll hit like fucking six, like I was up to six sets of 10 on my squat on about one minute to 90 seconds rest, 225 pounds. Fucking ass to the grass. Okay, I started out at like 175 and I've just been cranking it up. So I do that twice a week, and then on that day, I'll hit like some shoulders and maybe some biceps and some shit like that, and then I'll have one deadlift day, and I missed on my deadlift day, so I missed. I failed. My last deadlift day, I tried to hit six sets of 10 on a minute rest or a minute and a half with 275 pounds, and I hit 265 the, the cycle, like the six days before. And then I missed on 275. So I know I'm getting plateaued. So now I'm getting plateaued on almost everything right now. And I'm going to go into a strength routine for a month to let my body heal. And during that month, I will cut the carbs back. I will cut the carbs back. I will cut the food volume back. And I will get fucking shredded eating a little less calories and eating a little lower carb. Because I'll be doing like literally like probably less than half of the volume in the uh, in my workouts. You see how I do that? I dial the meals in towards my training, but I'm lean. Now, the fat people don't need to eat. They got all that fat they can roast, and it keeps you very muscle sparing when you have all that fat. This girl said, I have 15 pounds to lose. Help. Just fucking fast. That's it. Fucking fast. Okay? Go buy the fucking two salts. Go buy some quality water, mix up some snake juice, and start fasting. Also, after this video tonight, I want to see fucking accountability posts on that fucking group. I want to see pictures of your fat asses on the group. Okay, post your fucking pictures. Holds you accountable so you don't fuck up. Because once you put the picture up, it's like, okay, now I have to do something. Get those fucking pictures up. Okay, I just need a quick sip. By the way, guess what this is? You got it. The finest urine in the country. (laughs) So I'm on a 48 hour fast right now and I'm doing a piss fast. So I'm just fucking drinking straight piss for the whole time. So I'm not going dry and I'm not drinking snake juice. I'm drinking fucking solid piss. You know why? Because that fucking piss has fucking got amino acids in it. It's got fucking salt in it. It's got potassium chlorine. So last night I ate all this fruit and I ate this big meal. And so what I do is so I don't get so taxed. Because I'm a little too lean right now to be doing these fucking dry fasts for 48s. But I wanted this day off. So I'm drinking straight piss. Straight fucking piss. So this glass... That is basically how much I piss in one, if I was like, if I had to piss bad, I'll fill this glass right to the rim. So I filled it right up before I started this talk. And like, that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear piss. And they'll be, I'll even get fucking some ketones out of that piss later tonight. You know, I don't even have to buy exogenous ketones. I'll just be drinking my own. Fuck. If you don't know what exogenous ketones are, go look it up. Basically, it's a fucking scam. Uh, Here's a guy lost six pounds in 48 hours. That's pretty awesome. Um, Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay? Subscribe to the... Don't be lazy. Don't be fucking lazy. 
take your fucking little email, make a quick YouTube account, and subscribe. I got fucking haters that are subscribing. You think the people that are actually following me could fucking subscribe? Like, I got people that make accounts that are basically anonymous just to call me a fucking asshole. And fucking the people that are actually following my shit aren't subscribing. There's a fucking problem with that, okay? Let's see here. Here's one. So, Justin and Michelle Travis. I know you said not to do anything while you're first fast, but I have to work. Well, yeah, go to work. But just don't fucking do anything crazy. Okay? Just don't do anything crazy. And as long as you're not a fucking badass coffee addict, you'll be fine. Okay? Mix up the snake juice. Go to fucking work. When I say that, because some people, when they get to about that 36-hour mark, they feel really good because they're like in deep ketosis. And then they think they should just go start fucking training like a banshee and running marathons. And then they're all fucked up because they fucking, they haven't got through the withdrawals yet. That's the problem. People just have no fucking patience. The weight will come off you. Trust the process. Okay, have patience for crying out loud. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see. See a lot of people losing a lot of weight right off the bat. Remember, right off the bat, you're going to kick a pile of glycogen, so it's going to be a lot of water weight right at the start, right? You know you're truly burning fat. Like, optimally, you're burning fat as fast as you can when those strips are showing color. When those strips are showing fucking color and you're not eating anything, you're burning pure fucking fat. No matter what your weight does, if you're not eating any food at all, and those strips are fucking showing good color, meaning you're not fucking up the fast... That is the most amount of fat you could burn for basically the amount of activity you're doing. That is the most amount of fat you could possibly fucking burn. Okay, here's one. What's this say? She's new here. Her name's Helene. I don't know how to pronounce it. Started tonight after dinner. Just wondering how long have you been doing this for? Oh, now I'm like... Basically, I've probably been li living this kind of lifestyle for almost two years. And I've been lean since the first 30 days I started it. So, oh yeah, that's another thing for everyone who thinks, oh, how do you maintain this? Fuck, man. It's like, it's so easy. I've said before, I maintain being lean easier than you maintain being fat. It's hard for me to actually fucking get... I have to pretty much completely, like, just fuck up my whole fucking eating routine to gain any weight. If I, st I have to quit fasting all day and start fucking up my metabolism with multiple meals a day in order to really put on any weight. Like, I can only get so heavy eating the most amount of food I could possibly stuff in my face in a three or four hour eating window every day. I can only get so heavy. See, now, now once you people lose all the weight, then, like I said, you can eat full calorie counts again. Okay? Once you lose all the weight, you can eat a full calorie count. So, like, you're not going to lose any fucking weight eating. This is why you can't lose nothing eating one meal a day unless you're really watching the calories, which nobody fucking does. That's why it doesn't work for shit. So, to lose the weight, you got to fast hardcore and be at 100% caloric deficit if you want to lose weight like crazy. And then once you've lost the weight, then when you go to eat, full-size meal again, eating one meal a day at most, you aren't going to gain any weight back because all you're doing is you're going from using the fat for fuel to now you're using food again. So as long as you're not using fucking food for fuel, when you're fat, you're using the fat. You have no, your body's got no fucking choice. As soon as you start, as soon as you lose all the body fat, you have to eat because if you don't eat at that point, you're going to be breaking down fucking muscle. Okay. Like, that's how easy it is. It's, it's just, it's like fat or food. You eat, you fucking don't burn anything. You don't eat, you roast all the fat. And the fasting keeps your insulin low, so then you truly burn the fat. We're not just eating at a fucking bullshit caloric deficit like fucking Weight Watchers here. There's a whole, the, the hormone dynamic is way more complex than that. That's why, that's why everyone's like, all the mainstreamers are like, well, you just you just eat at a caloric deficit, but you can still eat all day. It's not how it fucking works. Why do you think we get such good results? You can't beat a fucking food addiction either eating throughout the fucking day. 
Okay, let's see here. I got off topic there. She asked, just wondering how long I have been doing this for. Do people live on this lifestyle? Like, how do you not, like, you know how easy it is to maintain this? The only fucking people that are going to fuck up are people that are just being lazy. Like, how it's easier physically to eat once in the day. Like, you have to put in an effort to eat more times in the day. You have to actually try to fucking eat more meals. Like, the easiest thing to actually do is to not eat. So you're actually putting in an effort to eat. You see? That's it. You're like putting in this effort to get the food. That's why you know it's a nasty ass addiction. Because if it wasn't an addiction, you wouldn't, there would be no issue. You just wouldn't eat till you're fucking ripped and then your body will call for food again and you start chowing down. And then also, when you get lean, everyone always asks like, how do you keep the weight off? Holy fuck. You've already lost all the weight with fasting. You've lost 100 pounds or 50 pounds. So if you fucking completely sh fuck up and you're just an idiot, you should never fuck up that bad at this point because your self-discipline is going to be cranked right up by this point. You've learned how to tell your friends to fuck off. But let's say you didn't tell your friends to fuck off for a whole week and just ate trash and drank booze so you, and then you gained five pounds... The answer to losing the five pounds again is obviously the same fucking answer as you did, you fucking did to lose the 50 pounds before. You just fasted and didn't eat. Like, how fucking simple is this? Okay. This girl asked, can I drink all the lemon juice that I want? Ah, uh, so... The lemon juice will fuck your teeth if you're just pounding it back. But I'll tell you this. I, when I was dry fasting all day, sometimes at night when I was doing a fast, I drank, I, I was actually drinking half of a bottle of lemon juice every time I took a fucking swig. So I drank a half a bottle in the day. So I just pound a half a bottle through a straw and then I'd have some vinegar as well and some baking soda. And I was doing that. The lemon juice isn't going to fucking boot you out of ketosis. You can drink a lot of it. Okay, you can drink a lot. Just, the thing is, I don't want people fucking, this is why I was fucking always saying to stay away and not drink too much. Because I don't want people to fucking be adding a pile of lemon juice to their drink. To their snake juice. Because when you're drinking snake juice throughout the whole day, and you got all these acids in it, it's going to fuck your fucking teeth. It's going to fuck your teeth. That shit will fuck your teeth. Guaranteed. I've done it. I fucking ate lemons for like two weeks straight and my teeth were fucked. And now they're healing up because I was fasting and I was basically cutting all the, all the citrus stuff out of my meals. I was eating a pile of oranges there for a couple weeks and I started to get a little bit of a like sensitivity on this one tooth. And I cut the oranges just to heal that tooth up because I was still from damage from those lemons. So I cut the oranges right out. So now I was pretty much just going, I was going bananas, apples, carrots, and whatever the meat source was. And that's it. And sometimes maybe it's some grapes. But like, I'm talking for me. This is how I can eat because I fucking, like, I'm lean. I don't have fucking any fat to lose hardly at all. I'm actually trying to maintain this body weight exactly right now. Fat people don't need to eat. Remember that. BCAs. So this guy asked, what about BCAs? What about them? They're fucking junk. Just fuck, you get all the fucking amino acids you need from meat. And when you're fat, your body fat has enough amino acids that you're going to be muscle sparing anyway. See, the coolest part is, is when you're a fat ass, you can literally not eat and drink snake juice and cut and keep all your muscle. Try doing that, eating even the littlest bit of food each day. It's not going to happen. You're going to fucking be catabolic. But because you, when you're fasting, your body is so muscle sparing that all that body fat, you'll preserve muscle. It's going to be hard to build muscle. Like I said, me and Paul, his volumes are going to go up. And I think because he was so, like, so far gone that we'll build some muscle. But for somebody that's already in shape, or not even that great a shape, say somebody that's like average, the thing is, just cut the fucking fat as fast as you can and then worry about, worry about trying to actually build muscle after. Just cut the fucking fat quick. You know why? It motivates you to be lean when you're in the gym. Even when I got kind of fat there and I lost my six pack, it's like all of a sudden then I don't even want to do any abs. Because it's like, what's the point? I don't got a fucking six pack anyway. I can't see it. 
then it makes you not even want to pump up. Like when you're lean, it makes you want to fucking pump iron even harder. Because you can see the muscles like working and shit. And you can see like the striations. Okay? Get fucking lean first. Do as much exercise as you can. Get fucking lean. And then fucking work your way up with a lean bulk. Don't worry about trying to fucking put on a bunch of muscle during the cut. Because you're not going to be that anabolic during a cut. You're going to fucking be basically even. Okay, you're not going to be catabolic if you're a fat ass, but you're not going to be anabolic either. Just fucking cut the fucking fat, then fucking start cranking up the food. Fuck. Voice is cracking again. Better drink some more piss. (laughs) So what you do, you cut as fast as you can. You get to where you're lean. Then you start cranking up the fucking food and fucking cranking up the volume in the gym. How easy is that? And to lose the fat should be fast. Like we're talking, unless you're super overweight, even if you got 50 pounds to lose, you should be able to cut it all in six weeks. Like it should be quick. Like the fat loss, we could call it the fat loss phase, okay? Let's say we're taking a guy and we're starting him from scratch. So the first phase is the fat loss phase. In this fat loss phase, you just don't fucking eat. And you drink snake juice. And then, you get to this lean phase. Now we're in the fucking building muscle phase. And that's where we eat more often, like maybe five or six times in the week, and we start cranking up the volume in the gym. How hard is that? Cut the fucking fat. And then worry about building muscle after you're fucking already lean. It's way better. You'll stay way more motivated. Okay? Way more motivated. Let's see here. Yeah, Vanthi had a good point here. Coffee and tea deplete your iron and vitamin stores. They dehydrate the fuck out of you and stimulate cortisol. Exactly what I was saying. Fucking junk. Um... Any alternative to potassium salt that we don't have it in Asia? You need potassium chloride. You can order it off the internet. There's going to be like even bulk bags of it. Potassium chloride. Okay, don't get the fucking names in your head. Like, I always just use no salt because it's no salt, salt free, new salt. Now is a brand. They make something you can buy off the internet. It's an orange bottle. It's fucking potassium chloride powder. Don't take the fucking capsules. They're fucking junk. Okay, potassium chloride. That's it. Um, see, this girl brought up something here. She says, I use a sauna suit. See, now, if you're trying to lose weight, we're burning fat when we're fasting. Don't start fucking using saunas and hot tubs and shit. Because you're just going to deplete your electrolytes. That's the whole reason we're drinking the snake juice in the first place is to keep the electrolytes up. So you feel good. Don't start sweating in the sauna. Don't worry about that for a cleanse. Okay? The fasting cleanses you 20 times better than your fucking sauna will. Just keep your ass out of the fucking sauna. Get the salt water in you and fucking fast. Jesus, hour goes by quick when I'm doing these. Uh, Let me bang through a couple more here quick. Here's one. I'm 112.4 pounds and 5 feet tall. I want to get to 105. Is this dangerous for me on thyroid meds? Fuck. Okay. These anxiety and thyroid meds you're taking, you can cut those cold turkey. They're junk. The only, like, like I said before, the doctors are idiots. They'll put you on a thyroid med because they'll try to convince you that the reason you got fat is because your fucking thyroid's fucked up. Your thyroid's fucked up because you're eating like shit. You're not fasting. And basically, it's a hormonal issue. So all you got to do is start fasting, cut your fucking meds, you'll fucking start dropping weight like crazy and you'll be fine. Okay? And at five feet tall, you don't even know what your best weight is. This is one thing I want to hit here quick too. You guys don't know what your goal body weight is. Don't make it sound like you know your body that good. You don't know shit. Because here's the thing. When you... Say you were like this girl here. Let's use her for an example. So at five feet tall, like maybe she'd be lean at 105. But cutting to 105 the mainstream way, the mainstream way, 
with eating multiple meals a day at a caloric deficit, you're going to have less fucking muscle mass and more body fat at the same fucking weight as if you did it through a fasting focused lifestyle. Okay? So don't make the assumption that a certain weight is too light for you. That's what I'm getting annoyed with. Don't make the assumption that a certain weight is too light. Here's what you do. Remember how I was talking about that fucking fat loss phase? You fucking cut. You fucking cut to the fucking point that you think you're actually underweight. Then you fucking reevaluate. Okay? Here's the... So... I have cut down to 156 fucking pounds before on a dry fast. I know how light I can get. Like, that was obviously too light. I'm even probably too lean at about 162 because that's after I rehydrated, I was probably about 162, 161. But I know how low I can go. So now I know what's up. See, a lot of women think that, oh, my goal is this weight. You don't have a fucking clue what your weight should be. Fucking undercut that fucking goal by five or ten fucking pounds, then you're probably closer to what you should be, and then reevaluate. If you fucking think you need to gain some weight back, then just gain it back. Get in the fucking gym, crank up your fucking single meal, and fucking gain some muscle, or gain a little bit of weight back. Okay? Undercut your fucking goal weight. If you think you should be 140, fucking hit 130. Then reevaluate. Doesn't mean you gotta be 130 forever. But you might feel fucking good at that lighter weight. And then if you feel like you are too slim, once you get to where I'm at and you're on the level I'm at, I have full control of my body. I can gain weight, lose weight whenever the fuck I want. I can just do whatever I want. It's not, nothing's out of my control. See, some people, the way they talk, it's like I have, it's like they talk like they have no control. And you don't yet. But you should in time. And that's the thing. Full control. I want to fucking see that. I want to see you have so much control that you could literally starve yourself to death or you can even get fat deliberately. I'd like to see some of you gain 10 pounds deliberately. I should even make that a contest. I should be like, here's the contest this month. Let's see who can gain the most weight and then cut it. Because then I know that you don't need help anymore. If you can do, if you can do that, You do not need my help anymore if you can fucking gain weight and then lose it deliberately. Not because you didn't, not because you went on a stupid fucking trip or something and gained weight. I'm talking you gained it through still fasting. You gained it through still eating a meal a day. But then you just cut it like you planned it. I'm talking a a strict plan. Like I am going to gain 10.0 pounds this month and I am going to cut 10.0 pounds in one week. If you can do that, you can do anything. That's called full fucking control of everything, okay? Then there's none of this crybaby bullshit like, ha, ah, what am I going to do? How, how am I going to keep the weight off? How am I going to fucking lose the weight? See, you just lose it. I can just lose it whenever I want. I can just gain it whenever I want. The only thing that hampers me is I can only gain so much because it actually gets hard to gain unless I just completely let my fucking life go to shit. But see, that's full control, That's where you want to get to with this shit. You don't want to have, there should be nothing that you're worried about. See, you should never be stressed. Because if you have full control, why would you be stressed? See, I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can lose weight, gain weight. I can do whatever I want. Once you get to that fucking state of being, you're a fucking, you have no problems anymore. You have no issues. Okay, you have no issues in life when you can deliberately gain weight. And then lose it deliberately and give yourself even time frames. You can fucking, it's, that's control. That is fucking control. How do you think I do all those fucking experiments to show you guys back in the day how good this worked? What do you think I fucking, some people even ask me, they're like, geez, you got fat quite a few times. I'm like, that's because I deliberately got fat so I could show you fuckers that I could do a seven day dry fast. Like, how the fuck was I supposed to do a seven day dry fast at 175 pounds starting weight? Ain't gonna happen. I'd have fucking died. Okay, I had to get up to 190 just to do the fucking dry fast. And I did the dry fast to motivate people that they wouldn't die doing a seven-day dry fast. Okay? That is, I'm going to leave it on that note. And so if there's any more questions, ask me or any of the fucking snake diet coaches. And 
make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and add your fucking friends to my Snake Diet Motivation Group. Don't be a goddamn pussy. Fucking tell your friends. It's helping you. If it's helping you, tell the world for fuck's sakes. Don't worry about my brashness. That's what'll make them actually do this. Okay? Tell your fucking friends. So everyone have a great night and get that fat in ya!